Ladies and gentlemen, this time I would ask you to please rise. RCN Sports presents Princeton University Basketball. Tonight, the Princeton Tigers take on the Musketeers of Xavier University. And welcome to Jadwin Gym on the campus of Princeton University in Princeton, New Jersey, site of tonight's ball game between Xavier from the Atlantic 10 and of course the Ivy League's Princeton Tigers. Hello again everyone, I'm Lou Brogno. Glad you could join us for another season of Princeton Tiger Hoops right here on RCN this season. Alongside tonight on the call of the game is Tad Kozineski and and Tad, this is a very interesting matchup. Xavier and Princeton, two teams that have played the last couple of years, but two teams with very contrasting styles. And very deliberate styles. Xavier is going to want to run and gun. They want this game to be a quick game. They want it to be a high scoring game. On the other hand, the home team Princeton, they want to take their time, take good shots, keep it a real slow paced game tonight. The Xavier team, very athletic. And when you talk about athletes, you look at the forecourt for the Musketeers and there you'll find Kevin Fry, one of the outstanding forwards in the Atlantic 10. And Kevin Fry, a very physical player, one of four starters averaging in double digits. His high game this year, 25. He can shoot the three as well. A very dangerous player. But again, the key here, I think there are four players that can really hurt the Tigers tonight. Talk about the Tigers. They've got an excellent play from one of their forwards. Mike Bechtal's really lit it up over the last couple of games. And he's pretty much come out of nowhere. He's played some time last year. Uh, it's a brand new Princeton team. We have a new coach this year. A lot of new players coming in. A lot of new players are going to have to step up. And right now, he has stepped up a great deal for this team. Also at the center slot, Nate Walton. He's done an excellent job on the boards and also dishing the, the ball out as well. Yeah, he's, he's on an all-time high for an assist. He'll be in the all-time lead when he's all done. He's averaging nine points a game. Not your typical center per se, but he's definitely the man that makes the Princeton go this year. Let's talk about the keys to the game tonight. First of all, for, for Xavier, what do they have to do to be successful? And, contra and conversely, what does Princeton have to do to come up with a win? I just think it comes down to style of play. Teams that like to put points on the board like to run and gun. They're going to want to rebound. They're going to get in a transition game, move the ball down the floor. Princeton, I think you're going to see them walk the ball up the court. The one thing that's maybe a little bit different for this Princeton team this year, they like to shoot the three. And the way things sit right now, they're second in the nation in three-point shots made. So maybe some three-point shots, if they're hot tonight, that could keep them in the game. All right, we're just moments away from the announcement of the starting lineups and college basketball action coming your way tonight on RCN. It's Xavier versus Princeton. You're watching Princeton University Basketball on the RCN Star Network. Tonight's presentation of Princeton University Basketball is brought to you by McCaffrey's Supermarkets. McCaffrey's in Princeton, West Windsor, and Yardley, Pennsylvania. McCaffrey's, a supermarket experience. Jadwin Jim in Princeton, home of the Tigers. It's their home opener. Princeton playing all five of their opening games on the road. Lou Brogno along with Tad Kozineski and Tad, that's a tough way to start the season, Road Warriors. Especially when you have a first-year coach with a bunch of first-year players, we'll say first-year starters on the team. That, that makes things very difficult, and that's one of the reasons why Princeton comes in 2-3 and three record. Also, who they played has had a lot to do with that as well. The Tigers' struggles off the court have been uh, well illustrated. Between August 31st and the start of the season, uh, Princeton basketball has lost all the following. You might want to take out a notepad because there's a lot to remember. Bill Carmody, of course, the head coach left and went to Northwestern. Following him, Ahmed El Nokali, uh, the injured point guard, was out with a groin injury. Spencer Gloger, the three-point specialist, one of the outstanding freshmen in the Ivy League a year ago, transferred to UCLA, so he has left the program. Chris Krug, a projected starting center, took leave of absence from the team. Ray Robbins, who was a starter last year, averaged over 10 points a game. He took a year off from school. Chris Young, the All-American center, signed a professional baseball contract with the Pittsburgh Pirate Organization and is ineligible for basketball under Ivy, under Ivy League rules. So you lose your head coach. You lose one of the best three-point shooters in the league. You lose an All-American center, and uh, it just goes on and on from there. That, those are some tough hits for any program to overcome, uh, yet the Tigers have uh, played some respectable basketball in their first five games. And to have to open up with Duke 
you know, just from there, it's, you know, you have to think these guys say, you know what, we open the season with Duke, it's going to be a little bit of a downhill from here. It's just a matter of you have to get your game in order. And a lot of these guys, again, they're just getting used to playing with one another. They have a couple games under their belt. It's still going to take another couple weeks for this team to get together and gel as a unit. The new head coach at Princeton is John Thompson III, 34 years old. He played here. Is third on the all-time Princeton assist list. And, uh, of course, uh, he has been schooled in basketball all his life. And uh, he steps into the head coaching position and kind of uh, short notice for him to, to get the head coaching position. So he's just getting his feet wet as well. He's done a good job in the first five games. And it might be a little bit easier that he's been here for as a few years as an assistant. So that would help the transition as well. The Xavier lineup tonight under head coach Skip Prosser will look like this. They'll start at the forwards, junior Kevin Fry. He's a 6'8 junior out of Chicago, Illinois. We featured him in the pregame. He's going to bang it around up front. Very physical player. Romaine Soto is the other forward. He's six foot four. Ohio's Mr. Basketball a year ago. David West is a 6'8", 240-pound sophomore center out of Gardner, North Carolina. In the backcourt, Maurice McAfee is the point guard, a 6-foot senior out of Saginaw, Michigan. And with him at the controls, the Musketeers average over 75 points per game. The other guard is Lionel Chalmers. He's a 6-foot sophomore out of Albany, New York. Skip Prosser, of course, is the head coach of Xavier in his eighth season. Princeton's starting lineup looks like this. It is a new look Tiger starting unit, as we mentioned, with all the changes. Mike Bechtold starts it forward, a 6'6 senior out of Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Quite a week, a week ago, he was the Ivy League player of the week, averaged over 15 points uh, per game. He had 23 against Lafayette. Eugene Ba, the other forward, 6'5 junior out of New York City. Nate Walton will start at center, the 6'7 senior out of San Diego coming off a 14-point, 11-rebound effort against Lafayette. In the backcourt, they'll go with Ed Persia. This is one of the newcomers. He's a freshman out of Bowman, Beaumont, Texas, excuse me, nine of his last 15 from three-point range. And C.J. Chapman, who did play a lot last year, senior 6-1 out of Aurora, Colorado, averaging 11 points per game. A lot of new faces there as starters. Ed Persia is the real new face, a freshman, and he comes in there trying to, you don't want to say fill the shoes of Spencer Gloger, but he has to pick up some of that three-point shooting slack. Well, he's had a decent year thus far. He's averaging eight points a game, four for eight from the three-point line. So again, you just want to have him do things slowly. You don't want to jump in and go nuts all at once. So just develop your game and get some minutes and develop as you go. The Tigers uh, under John Thompson, two and three. They lost to Duke, a blown out, 87 to 50. That game, of course, uh, on the road. And then coming off uh, their last loss to Lafayette, 80 to 73. Any team would have been hard pressed to win that game. Lafayette shot 24 of 25 from the free throw line. That's unbelievable. And, and that's something they just teach you back in high school. If you go to the free throw line a great deal, make your free throws, you're going to win the game. That's something, that, again, this Princeton team has to work on. They got to get their percentage up a little bit as well. Last year, the Tigers, of course, getting into postseason play. They've been in postseason play the last five years in a row. And as you take a look at the Ivy League, they will have another shot to do very well within the league, Tad. Penn looks like they're a little down this year. The rest of the league, not particularly strong. And, and uh, the Tigers have as good a shot as any to, to win it once again. And their schedule will help them. Some of the teams that they play will prepare you. I've had a chance to see Penn play once this year, and frankly, they just did not look very good. They are off to a bad start this year. So again, in in the Ivy, again, they'll have a great shot, and, and you could say, hey, they may be the favorite again this year, as always. Princeton, of course, and Penn have been the two teams the last, uh, I want to say the last 15 forever. years, that have, forever, uh, that have uh, historically been battling for the Ivy League championship. Every once in a while, another team creeps in there, but again, it looks like it'll be Princeton and Penn. And all indications, again, that's what everyone in the Ivy's gearing towards. You hear talks of some of the other teams throughout the Ivy, but again, the way you look at things right now, should be Princeton, should be Penn, but again, Penn off to a bad start, and they are really struggling. 
forget about the Ivy League race tonight. The Tigers want to win this game against Xavier. They've lost two in a row to the Musketeers last year in the NIT. 58-54 game where the Tigers had a huge lead and uh, the Musketeers came back to win. Princeton's thinking they want to win tonight, not only to avenge that loss, but also get to the 500 mark. They come into the game two and three. It's going to be interesting, too, to play the crowd today. The crowd so far just seems very, very quiet, not knowing what to expect tonight. Absolutely right. Let's go to the public address announcer, Bill Bromberg, who will have the announcement of tonight's starting lineups. At forward, a 6'8 junior from Chicago, Illinois, number three, Kevin Fry. The other forward is a 6'4 freshman from the Central African Republic, number 10, Romain Sato. At center, a 6'8 sophomore from Garner, North Carolina, number 30, David West. At one guard, a six-foot senior from Saginaw, Michigan, number 15, Maurice McAfee. And the other guard, a six-foot sophomore from Albany, New York, number zero, Lionel Chalmers. The assistant coaches for Xavier are Jeff Battle, Mark Schmidt, Tino Guardio, and the head coach of the Musketeers is Skip Rosser. And now, fans, let's meet your Princeton Tigers. The assistant coaches are Mark, Mike Brennan, Robert Burke, and Howard Levy. The head coach of the Tigers in his first season is John Thompson. And now the starting lineup at forward, a 6'6 junior from Lebanon, Pennsylvania, number 23, Mike Bechtel. The other forward, a 6'5 junior from New York, New York, number 21, Eugene Bob. That's center for your Tigers, a 6'7 senior from San Diego, California, number 33, Nate Walton. At one guard, a 6'1 freshman from Beaumont, Texas, number 10, Ed Persia. A 6'1 senior from Aurora, Colorado, number 22, C.J. Chapman. All right, we are ready to go. Xavier and Princeton, the Tigers in their home opener, looking to even their 2000-2001 record at 3-3. Three and three. They come in 2-3 and three on the year. Xavier at five and one, they've been impressive. Their only loss was to Wisconsin. That was on the road in Madison, always a tough place to play. They lost to the Badgers 61-46. Last year, Xavier 21 and 12 and went to the NIT. Of course, they feel they should have went to the NCAA tournament. They were those bubble teams that got pushed out last year. And again, this is a tough team. They're a very good basketball team. Right off the start, Princeton is going to have to try to play their game. They're going to want to control the ball, control the tempo, take good shots, hit their three-pointers. They don't want to get into any kind of a run-and-gun game with the Musketeers. Let's face it, if they do, it's going to be a long night. It certainly could be. Princeton home white, trimmed with orange and black, of course, and Xavier sporting some road black uniforms this year. Trimmed with a little purple, very little purple. <laughs> I'm looking for yeah. it, but I can't find it. <laughs> Looks like a big size difference tonight between the two teams as well. Well, David West will jump it up for the Musketeers. He's 6'8", 240. Nate Walton goes at 6'7", and uh, he will jump for Princeton. Walton's been playing very well. A fifth year senior, of course had a medical red shirt one year, so this is his fifth season playing basketball for the Tigers. Xavier wins the tap, Musketeers have the basketball. They will move left to right on your screen. Defensively early on, Princeton with the man to man. That'll tell the story, gotta start tough defensively. Chalmers 
Flips it in the corner, 15 on the shot clock. Jump shot put up, no off the rim, and a whistle and a foul over the top on Kevin Fry. Fry very physical underneath, and he gets caught early. That's the first team foul on the Musketeers. Really good defense by Princeton there. A forced shot by Xavier, great position. Long pass down court to Bechtold, he corrals it. C.J. Chapman flips to Walton, top of the key. Here's the freshman, Ed Persia. Everyone anxious to see him. Eugene Baugh dribbles in, lays it up, can't connect. Had a, had a very good look at the basket, drove the lane beautifully, but couldn't connect. Coach Thompson will take that shot all night. Blew right by the defender, had an easy layup, didn't use the backboard, and it clanked off the rim. Xavier in the forecourt. Sato flips top of the key, McAfee moves against Bechtold, Sato jump shot from the corner, good, that's a three, and Xavier takes the early lead, 3-0. Romain Sato, Mr. Basketball in the state of Ohio, quite a player, just a freshman, excellent recruit for Skip Prosser. Ed Persia, the freshman, moving against McAfee. Walton looking for the back door. Persia for three. No. It hit nine of his last 15 three-point shots, but doesn't connect there. Xavier did a good job of picking up the back door in that last defensive set. That's what Princeton wants. Every offensive set, Xavier did a good job of taking it away. Chalmers dribbling it. Stopped at the foul line by Chapman. McAfee bounce pass goes inside West, trying to back it in, but then he's double teamed. Good defense by the Tigers. Less than 10 on the shot clock. Chalmers dribbles in, puts it up high off the glass, no. Rebound underneath, knocked away by Walton, and the Tigers come up with a good D by Princeton. Princeton's doing a good job in perimeter defensively. When they get it in the low post, though, you can see that's where the size advantage is taking shape. Persia flips to Bechtold. Two and a half gone by, first half. Xavier with a three nothing lead. Walton takes the three and we're tied. Well, it almost looked like he didn't want to shoot it initially, but they gave it to him. He said, what the heck, and drained it. And the streak continues for Princeton. Give me that stat in a moment. Here's Fry's jumper, it's good. And Xavier takes a 5-3. Lead. Princeton's made a three-point shot in every game since 1986. How do you like that statistic? <laughs> that is amazing. Xavier coming right at the Tigers defensively. Full court man-to-man -man pressure almost got the steal. Persia, full court pressure by Xavier. Walton gets it up to Beckham. Persia comes around to meet the pass. Flips the ball. Tigers very patient offensively. That is their style. C.J. Chapman. Bechtold has a long three. It's good. He drains it. That was from way downtown. Mike Bechtold. And that was an NBA three distance there. Well done. Princeton has the lead. 6-5 Tigers. West. Moving in and travels on the baseline. So on the turnover, Princeton gets it back. Walton did a good job defensively of holding up against him there. But again, I think there's a big advantage for Xavier. When they get the ball in the low post, Princeton's really struggled thus far. Walton, the long pass to Chapman, makes the over-the-shoulder catch, and it's blocked on the backboard. Whoa. Princeton wants goaltending. That should be. That hit off the glass first. That is goaltending. They missed that. No call, and Sato hits a three, so a big turnaround. No call for the Tigers, and Xavier comes down and hits the three. Musketeers have a two-point lead. That's a killer. That's a, a good four-point swing. McAfee picks the pocket and lays it in. Nice defensive play by Maurice McAfee. You can already see the difference in the speed of the guard. Xavier's guards very quick with their feet, very quick with their hands. This full-court pressure is going to cause Princeton some problems. Xavier with a four-point lead. That's the Musketeers' largest lead in the early going. Four and a half gone by. 
in this first half, and it's stolen again by McAfee. You can see it right there, very quick at that guard position, causing Princeton a ton of trouble. Chalmers goes inside to West, and it gets Fry, excuse me, and again he travels. And there's a timeout on the floor, 15-23, a remaining first half. It's Xavier 10 and Princeton 6. Well, to Princeton's credit, when they're getting the ball in the low post, Princeton is doing a good job of causing turnovers. Let's go back and see if we can take a look at this play. I thought it was a goaltending. Looked like it went off the backboard first. Now, again, that's the key. Backboard first. Yeah, that's clearly off the backboard oh, yeah. first. They missed that one. <laughs> The only one who missed it was the official. <laughs> Three of them. <laughs> Everyone in Jadwin Jim saw that. Yeah. That, that was an easy one. Well, we're early on this season. I guess they got to work the cobwebs out as well. So the Tigers get robbed on that play. And they're down by four. It's 10-6 Xavier. But so far, Tigers seem to be holding their own. They're doing what they want to do offensively. They've been able to to run their plays and get some nice open threes from outside. They've missed a couple of easy shots, which have hurt. Eugene Baugh missing that layup. That also is a killer. There's two things that stick out in my mind. Xavier is a lot quicker on the floor. They're going to get some turnovers. The other thing is that low post play. So far, Princeton's been very fortunate. They've gotten some turnovers and some walks, but they are having a tough time matching up with the forwards in the center. John Thompson, I'm sure he's saying, look, we're just keep what we're doing on offense. That seems to be working. Defensively, they've played well for the most part, but the, the size differential, a problem down low. There's just not a lot you can do about that. The best thing with the size differential is keep your man from receiving the ball, because once they get the ball, they have the size and the weight, and you're in trouble. It'll be Princeton basketball. Tigers will throw in. On the baseline, Nate Walton will trigger. Full court press. Persia looking to get it across. He goes back to Walton. Walton goes up the back hole, but it's stolen. And Fry is going to be called for the foul. Skip Prosser very upset on the Xavier bench. Yeah, I think Prin I think Princeton got a break there. Bechtold did not go to catch the ball. Defender came in. Probably should have came in with the steal, but it's going to pick up the foul. You can see, actually, that right there, Fry's in actually better position. Skip Prosser, very upset. Prosser, his eighth season, 149 wins. And Xavier has done an excellent job. Chapman fakes the three, dribbles in. Bechtold will take the three, got it! Mike Bechtold on fire from three-point range. And it's, a, it's the penetration game, draw the double team, kick it out for the three. So far, the Tigers doing a good job with that. 10-9 the score, jumper put up, no. Walton keeps it alive, but it comes back to the Musketeers. McAfee, an open three, rims the basket. Persia, smallest guy on the court, gets the rebound. And you can see Xavier not very patient on offense. They want a quick moving game. So if Princeton can keep it going, the defense, they can hang. Ba goes to Walton, back to the basket. Xavier by one. Ba dribbles in, whistle, and a foul on the Musketeers. As we're sitting here courtside, you can see a lot of the confusion on the face of the Xavier team defensively, trying to pick up these screens, looking over their shoulders. So far, this offense is giving a little bit of problems. Eugene Ba at the top of the key. Here's C.J. Chapman. Back to hold another three, and he hits again. He's unconscious from three-point range. I think if you're Xavier, you have to get out there in three. He's doing a good job. They're setting every play for him. They're getting the picks for him. He's getting open looks at the basket. The Tigers have a two-point lead. It's 12-10. Chalmers. McAfee dribbles in, flips it back outside, and the shot put up off the rim, though. Comes down to Xavier. Rebounding again is killing the Tigers. Xavier getting second and third looks at every shot. Xavier out rebounded Princeton in their last meeting, 32 to 10. You can see that Xavier 
really has the advantage on the boards. And as a coach, there's not a lot you can do. It's to get your guys in good position and try and keep the ball coming in on the entry level pass. Sato and Ba got him. Ba got him with a hand check. Sato's very, very quick. It was a very quick move there, and that's what drew the fouls. He got out of position a little bit there to Ba. It's Ba's first, and only the Tigers' first team foul with 13-21 remaining in the first half. West flips it over to Price. He puts up the shot, doesn't go. West gets it back and scores. That's a great power move by West. Spun it off the backward. Very tough to do. David West, 6'8", 240. He's a load in there. There's a foul on Lloyd Price, the junior out of Wilmington, Delaware. Getting a lot of these touchy fouls early on, not you know overly aggressive fouls going for the ball, but just getting out of position, being a little lazy on defense. Game tied at 12, just over seven minutes gone by in the first half. Back told again, and he missed. Crowd's in a state of shock. <laughs> Guess you can miss once in a while. But again, I think if he gets the open look, he's gonna take it. Price puts it up, no. West loses, and a foul on Princeton. Tigers have to find a way to get better position underneath. I mean, there's three and four Musketeers to one Tiger underneath. That's gonna cause some problems. So you look at it again underneath. And again, he's trying to get in good position. You can see right in there under the basket, Soto is the first man in the ball right under the basket. Somebody's got to get a body on him. Dribbling in. Great dish to West, and he's hammered. Maurice McAfee with a terrific pass. It's a great job by Ba to come in and help defensively. Because offensively, they're having their way underneath. You can see they get the double team here, the penetration. This is going to be a dunk if there isn't for the help here by Ba. David West at the line. He'll shoot two. First is short. We'll get another. Looking to give the Musketeers the lead. Second is on the way. Good. Xavier with a 13-12 lead. And this has been a tough point here for Tigers. They've had to throw it in four times now to get this ball in bounds because they can't get the ball to the guards. CJ Chapman moving against Lloyd Price. They go inside to Walton, wanted to go back door. Boz open for three, in and out. That was halfway down the cylinder. You can see they are just screening underneath to kick it out. They want the threes. If they drain them, they'll be in the game. They've missed their last few threes. Now there's a battle underneath. Looks like a foul there gets Bechtold. He is battling away with West for position. That's a tough battle for Mike Bechtold. He is 6'6", going up against the 6'8", 240-pound West. A timeout on the floor with 11.49 remaining first half. And it is Xavier 13 and Princeton 12. All things considered, I think the Tigers have to be very happy with the score right now. 13-12, they're holding tough against this tough Xavier team. A lot of things haven't gone Princeton's way thus far, but the three-pointers are falling, and that's been the big factor. Princeton Tiger basketball is brought to you by McCaffrey Supermarkets. Located in Princeton, West Windsor, and Yardley, Pennsylvania, McCaffrey's a supermarket experience. A look at some of the crowd. You mentioned uh, a little quiet tonight in the home opener. Amazingly, very quiet. You expect the home opener, fans to be a little bit more into, but just very, very quiet. We understand that there's a big hockey game tonight at uh, Baker Rink, so that's Draw, drawing some of the fans away. Princeton playing RPI. And so that's a big game tonight. Some of the fans uh, might have headed 
and over there tonight taking some hockey. Well, especially after you upset the number 12 team in the nation. That means you've got a decent team, and they do have a very good men's hockey team here at Princeton. Of course, they have excelled in so many athletic endeavors here at Princeton. Excellent men's lacrosse team. Uh, it goes on and on. Basketball, of course, has been so successful. Hockey and football team, I think, is on the way back under Roger Hughes. They showed some glimpses of exciting football this year, and I think they're going to be a team to contend with next year. Well, the longer this game goes on, the better the Tigers' chances. I think if push comes to shove at the end of the game, if you need free throws made, you know the Tigers are a pretty good free throw shooting team. The early going, Mike Bechtel leads the way for the Tigers. He has nine points. Romain Soto has six for Xavier. Princeton shooting 57% from three-point range. <laughs> That'll keep you in the game, that's for sure. Get another shot here. Oops, you got to be in bounds to catch the ball. That's one rule. <laughs> see though Xavier on defense looking a little frustrated here trying to pick up these picks. That's well, very frustrating to play against the Princeton offense. You just don't see this kind of offensive basketball throughout the season. Xavier doesn't see this in the Atlantic 10. That's not a good shot. Yep. Nice play there. Walton, Walton is doing a nice job. You see Walter there. He's doing a nice job fighting against West. So far, West very frustrated underneath. Here it is again. You can see him leaning in for position. Walton, Walton almost gets a steal. Right there. Sato goes inside. Oh, West slams it through. That was a defensive missed assignment there because it was a bounce pass through two defenders. Nothing but dunk there. That's a tough one. Three-point Xavier lead. They're up 15-12. Less than 11 minutes remaining. First ten. Ahmed El Nokali is in the game now for the Tigers. He had surgery to repair a tendon in his groin. And timeout taken by Princeton. So. John Thompson wants to talk it over. He's going to take a 30-second timeout to talk things over. Let's take a look at that power move by West. You see a great entry-level bounce pass through the defender, wide open here, because over committing there was Walton. Walton was so concerned about reaching around that stopped that entry-level pass. He got out of position. You know, get back to Ahmed El Nokali, who you see right there in the center of your screen. It'll be interesting to see his movement on the court. Uh, the surgery to repair a tendon in the groin. We were talking off the air before uh, the game, and I can't imagine the pain that must be involved in a surgery like that. Well, usually even if you just pull a groin muscle, you can usually handle uh, regular running. It's stop and go that's very painful, and left and right lateral movement on defense that can really wreak havoc on you. So we'll see what kind of movement he has. A very important player for the Tigers last year, a big contributor for Princeton. Princeton in the ball game. They're down by three with 10.36 remaining in this first half. Couple of happy fans right there. And the holidays, everyone in a festive mood here, but again, relatively quiet. First home game here, new coach. Just trying, I guess everyone's analyzing the game and they'll get into it more in the second half. Not quite sure what to expect, I guess. No, as do a lot of us here in this area. Uh, with all the players that they, they've lost, transfers, what have you, it's a team that really still has to develop and get together. The Tigers have been so dominant over the past decade or so in the Ivy League. In fact, they've won seven Ivy League championships in the last 12 years. And again, once they get to their Ivy League play, as we mentioned, they'll be in pretty good shape. I mean, they'll be up in the top when, when things are all said and done. It's just now you're going to have your growing pains when you're facing some of these top teams in the nation. But I think it's good to get these games under your belt early. Yeah, one thing the Tigers do schedule-wise, they do not duck anyone 
They schedule up. Of course, uh, when you play Duke in the first game of the season, I would qualify that as scheduling up. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Ahmed El Nokali. Chapman way off. Good defense. Delivered by Alvin Brown, junior out of Washington, D.C. You always wonder when, when your team takes a timeout and you come out an offensive set and just gun one up as there's another basket. David West shooting from the outside that time. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. You call timeout to settle things up, get a good play, and you force up a three that doesn't even hit the rim. El Nokali, the junior out of Pittsburgh. Goes to C.J. Chapman, Persia, top of the key. Tigers with a three-guard alignment now. Bechtold and Walton, the only big players. Persia dumps it back out to Chapman. And it almost looks like they don't want any low post play. Three guards, usually outside to three. Now they go low post. Walton thought about putting it up. He had no chance. He was double teamed down low. Chalmers way outside takes the three. West puts it in. That's, right. that's your game summary right there. Offensive glass. That, that's been the difference for Xavier. Well, Xavier now has its largest lead of the game. They're up by seven. It's 19 to 12. Beck told for three. No. Wait, this almost looks like a Tiger team that's either going to live by the three or die by the three. Problem is, if you don't get any offensive rebounds and you don't hit your threes, you're dead. Chapman went way up high to get that. Yeah, if you're hot, you're going to be in great shape, but they've missed their last five. And a lot of these shots, in my opinion, are just kind of forced up. Princeton down by seven. They need a bucket here to creep back in. Eight and a half remaining first half. Chapman three, got it. They needed that one. C.J. Chapman drills it from the top of the key. Well, it looks like Xavier's just going to suck it back. They're going to let him shoot the threes tonight. Fry off the rim. Chapman way up to get a piece of that. C.J. Chapman, he can he can really sky. Offensively, you can make your threes. You'll be in good shape. You can see how far out they are beyond that three-point line as you get the pass here to Chapman. That's almost an NBA three. That's obviously the game plan here tonight, Lou, is they want three-pointers. They want good looks from three-point range. Stolen by Chapman. Defense cut off that passing lane. Eight minutes even remaining. First half, Xavier with a four-point lead. They're up 19-15. Andre Logan, number 30, in the game now for the Tigers. He has the basketball. Chapman. Goes inside, Walton, nice move. Good pass from Chapman. Excellent job by Chapman. He saw the opening in the low post. Defensively, they were so concerned with the three, they let the pass go. It's a two-point game. Tigers have crept right back in. And it's knocked away by Chapman. And takes it out of bounds. It'll be Xavier basketball. If we look at this here again. Nice play inside and over commitment defense and a beautiful layup. Timeout on the floor with 7.23 remaining first half. And Princeton right back in it at 19.17. C.J. Chapman has been quite a spark plug over the last couple of minutes defensively. He's done a good job. It, it seems like defensively, now that we're a good 10 minutes into this game, the team has come together. They're starting to identify some of the sets. They're anticipating some of the passes and doing a good job getting there before Xavier is. The Tigers at two and three. They won a tournament in the Midwest. Defeated Weber State and Ball State. Those were two very good wins for the Tigers. Those were their two wins. They've lost to Duke, lost to Lafayette, and probably one game that they would like to back is their loss to Mammoth. That's a game the Tigers felt they probably could have and should have won heading in. 
And early on, again, it comes back to the new coach with a lot of first-time starters, a lot of guys not used to seeing a lot of action. You're going to get growing pains like that early in the season. The job of that man right there is to get the team to come together by the time you hit your Ivy schedule and then get into where you want to be and play your regular game at that point. The Tigers will play Rutgers right here on Thursday night. It's always a big game. The Scarlet Knights are off to a good start. Then they'll hit the road. They've got to play TCU next week on the road and then they'll have one more road game at Holy Cross before they start their Ivy League schedule in January. And defensively, I'm getting a better feeling about Princeton right now. It just looks like defensively they've settled down. They're doing a real nice job defensively. The problem is they got to keep it out of the low post. Tigers three-point shooting, keeping them in the game. They're shooting 46% from three-point range. They are getting murdered on the boards, though. Sato, jump shot, no, Walton the rebound. Big rebound for the Tigers. Prior to that rebound, Xavier was out rebounding Princeton 15 to three. And it's amazing, it's just a two point game. That's a real credit to the Princeton defense and their three point shot ability. Walton is loose underneath and he can't hit. Almost tapped it in on the rebound. Chalmers quickly up court. Inside, knocked away off of Xavier. So the Tigers will get it back. A chance to tie with six and a half remaining in the first half. Princeton defense doing a great job again. They anticipate the entry level pass there, knocked it away. See if the guards can get open here. Persia, double teams, Elmo Collie, trying to direct traffic. Gets it across the midcourt line. Walton at the top of the key, flips it outside to Chapman. Elmo Colley takes the three, and it's short. Now he has not been playing it's his first game back from injury, so he might not have his shooting touch yet. Chalmers did a great job to recover and partially deflect that. Knocked away, big defensive play underneath by Kyle Wente, the sophomore, just into the game. Good job going toe-to-toe -to -toe there. No foul, well done. Well, no, Cali. Walton, top of the key. Inside Walton. Good luck by Ahmed El Mokali. The offense is coming together. The screening game is really giving the Musketeers problems. Couple players overcommitted and lost their man. That's why they got the easy layup. Tied at 19. Xavier had a 19 to 12 lead. Tigers have reeled off seven straight points. And a foul underneath on the Tigers. Well, defensively, you can help yourself with some blocks. Let's see what the Tigers can do here as so we get a replay of the block. Boy, a lot of body there. I think the refs were a little <laughs> easy on the Tigers on that one. More than a lot of body. Put some shoulder pads on him, linebacker. I guess we had the advantage of instant replay. A little easier for us, I guess. Uh, you notice how I'm not saying much on that. <laughs> <laughs> Let the pictures speak for themselves. Here's Price. Price, three-pointer off the front of the rim. West underneath as it blocked by the foul. Andre Logan, the 6'7 freshman, got a piece of it, but they're going to call the foul on the Tigers. And again, another offensive rebound for Xavier. That's been where they've scored most of their points today, is off offensive rebounds. Their shooting percentage has not been that good here in the first half. David West at the line. He'll shoot two. Tigers have 16 fouls. He hits the first. So Xavier has a one-point lead. 
Last year, the Musketeers beat the Tigers by four, 58-54. Second is on the way, good. Xavier by a bucket, 21-19. Wenty to Walton. Now it looks like Princeton has gotten away from wanting to go for the three-pointer. They're looking more for the typical Princeton game inside of the backdoor screen. They're getting some easy buckets off of it. Elna Colley tried to go with a bounce pass in the lane with too many Musketeers there. That pass just wasn't there. Price into West, double team, back to Price. Tried for the jam and the foul on the shot, no basket. Price and West are a real tough double team combination for this Xavier team as we'll try and take a look at this again. You see West number 30, he grabs the ball. There's the double team and a great job of cutting the basket there. Good job to avoid the dunk and make him earn at the foul line. Free throw good. Lloyd Price is a junior out of Wilmington, Delaware. Second on the way, no good. And the rebound comes down to Logan. It's a three point Xavier lead, 22 to 19. Four minutes left, first half. Logan takes the shot and gets it. Nice shooting touch. Nice soft touch off the front rim. Very soft. Hit it off the front, rolled it in. That's a nice try, though, being very aggressive and going to hoop. In Xavier's whole game is they want the low post. When they set up in the half court, they're looking to get it down in the block. 10 on the shot clock. McAfee way outside, can't hit the three. Wente pulls down the rebound, and Princeton can take the lead on this possession. And a miss helps Princeton in two ways. It slows down the pace. Also, not a chance for Xavier to come up with that full court pressure. Chapman dribbles, top of the key. Wente thought about the three. They still have time, 15 on the shot clock. Walton backing in. Now takes the lane, dishes outside. That's going to be an offensive foul on Nate Walton. Great job by Lloyd Price. He saw that coming all the way. Just stood there waiting for it. You'll see it here again on the instant replay. Price is number 34 is the drive here by Walton. Price just sitting there waiting for it. Good call by the officials. 254 remaining first half. Timeout on the floor. Xavier 22. Princeton 21, pretty entertaining first half of basketball. And again, you can see where Princeton has developed. This, as the game started offensively, just one and a three, just one and a three. They got the ball inside a little bit more. It's opened things up offensively for them. And defensively, they've really stepped it up the second half of this first half. Some difficulties for Xavier defensively because, as you mentioned, Princeton looking for the three early. Xavier. A little confused by the offense that Princeton was running then. Now Princeton's kind of going inside, and Xavier has had to adjust to that. Well, it's it's basically the same type of offense they've been running for many years with the Tigers. The only difference is they're putting a couple more guards out beyond three-point, and if it's there, they have a green light to shoot it. Maybe in past years, they're looking more for the layup or the inside game. Again, the key being, if you make your threes, you come out looking like a champ. If you're missing your threes like they did, Coach Thompson changed the theory around, said, all right, let's go back to, to our regular offense, let's pound it inside. One of the odd statistics coming in for the Tigers, they had hit 55 three-point baskets. Only 49 two-pointers coming into the game. That is very unusual. Well, and that goes to the way they started this game. A lot of three-pointers. When they made them, they were doing well. Again, I liked the way Coach changed things up to let's look a little bit more inside. That'll open up the whole offense for you. There's a look at our broadcast position, side court. The 
Xavier coming in five and one. They're only lost to Wisconsin out of the Big Ten. Lloyd Price set the line. Skip Prosser, I'm not quite sure. He's got some kind of confusion in front of the Xavier bench. Everything seems to be okay now. John Thompson is talking to the officials. Price hits the first. So far, Xavier doing a good job from the free throw line. As I see. <laughs> <laughs> the kiss of death. I don't, Price, the first shot looked real fluid. Nice job. The second shot, he goes up. Looks like he wants to release, comes down, lets it go. It's just an odd shot. Just an odd flick of the wrist. That's just not a good basic foul shooting stroke. The first one, he did a good job. And then Xavier fouled to make things worse on the missed shot. Just odd looking footwork. So Princeton can tie it or take the lead with a three point basket. Two and a half remaining first half. Xavier up 23 21. Two on the shot clock. Chapman drills it right before the shot clock violation. Tigers will take that all night long just before the shot clock goes off. They get the three. Whoa. A lot of pushing and shoving underneath. The foul is on Xavier. Conrad Wysocki, the freshman out of Germany, six foot eight, is into the game now, and he's pushing people around underneath. David West also involved in this, and we'll try and give you another look at it here. A lot of battling going on underneath. It'll be on the right side of your screen. There you see West. West comes in, and that's where the foul was called. <laughs> Wysocki goes in there. Draws a foul, they take him right out. I Good guess job. He did his job. Good job. <laughs> Nate Walton brings it across. Princeton up 24 23. Two minutes left, first half. Tigers looking to increase the lead. And check foul on Xavier. The referees again really kind of nitpicky at some of these calls for both teams out by the guards. A lot of times they just want to set the tone early. Xavier over the limit. That'll send the freshman Andre Logan to the line. He'll shoot one and one. This is our first look at Andre Logan out of Brooklyn, New York. What's the first? Getting a good amount of playing time as a freshman. He promises to be quite a player for the Tigers down the road. Averaging about six points a game thus far. Second on the way. Good. He hits both. Good form. Tigers have a three point lead. That's their largest lead of the first half. Defensively, they can stay tough on the guards. They're not in bad shape. Again, they got to keep it out under the blocks. Got to. Elno Kali gets called for the foul. Went for the steal. And that'll send the Musketeers to the line. Tough break for the Tigers there because he actually kicked the ball first. They didn't call that. And that just would have been back to Xavier. But then he gets the foul. Lionel Chalmers, sophomore out of Albany, New York, will go to the line to shoot. Nate Walton back in the game. Mike Bechtold sits down. Actually, not Bechtold, but uh, Conrad. Wysocki. Free throw good by Chalmers. Second on the way. Good. 26 25. Minute and a half remaining. First half. Elno Kali gets it across. I think if you're Princeton here, you really want to run some clock and try to get to halftime in this position. Don't force a shot. If it's open and it's there, go ahead. Chapman. Wow. 
Wow. Has it knocked away. Reggie Butler in the game now for Xavier. Chapman drove nicely the basket, then realized he was in no man's land before the shot tried to pass it, and that was swatted away. Well, the Musketeers can take the lead. They trail 26-25, 55 seconds left. 17 now on the shot clock. Inside they go to Butler, who just ran over Nate Walton. He gets called for traveling. Could have been called for an offensive foul. Big men for the Tigers have done a great job. They're outsized for the most part in this form of the game, but they're getting a lot of turnovers. Here's another one on the travel. Here's the call here as he picked up both pivot feet. That is correct. A little bit of pushing, too. Throwing elbows. He was uh, fortunate to be called for travel. So the Tigers have a one-point lead. They can add to it with 35 seconds left in the first half. Fifteen on the shot clock, 25, and counting down in the first half, about a 10-second di differential. Nice pass inside, El Nakali scores, and the foul. Good look by Andre Logan. That's Tigers basketball, the backdoor cut, the defense off guard. Beautiful job to lay this one. You'll get the backdoor cut off the left side of your screen. Great job here. Through two defenders, there's your foul. Great presence of mind to get that one home. So Ahmed El Nokali will shoot. And you know, we had a question about his movement. He's moving around pretty good. He really has. That was a tough move there as he had to charge to the basket. So far, not showing any signs of pain. Kevin Fry, number 34, Lloyd Price, number 30, David West. This is that time of the game you want to get anyone foul prone out of the game with 16 seconds to go in the first half. That's why you saw a handful of substitutions there. Skip Prosser sending in a couple of players for the Musketeers. Free throw is good. And Princeton has a four-point lead, 29-25, with 16 seconds remaining. Tiger fans beginning to get into it a little bit. Five seconds, shot put up, no. And the rebound comes down to Wysocki, and that'll do it. First half comes to an end. The fans on their feet, giving Princeton a standing ovation. I think they're mildly surprised. The game started slow for the Tigers, but they really got the defense going. That led to the offense and led to the halftime lead. Princeton with a 29-25 halftime lead. And and we'll be back with second half action very shortly. You're watching Princeton University Basketball on the RCN Star Network. Welcome back to Jadwin Gym here in Princeton where the Tigers lead the Musketeers of Xavier 29 to 25. Lou Brogner along with Tad Kozineski and there's a look at our first half stats and you can see there that uh, turnovers fairly even. Rebounds pretty much all Xavier. Total rebounds 19 to 9. The shooting percentages for Xavier they shot only 35% from the field and only 18% from three-point range. Conversely, the Tigers shot 46% from three-point range. And stat-wise, that's been the difference of the game, your, your field goal percentage. 35%, as you mentioned, for Xavier. And we were told they went in a nine-and-a-half-minute stretch without making a bucket. And 
it's amazing they're as close as they are with, with something like that. You see the stat right there, nine and a half minutes. They didn't score a field goal in the first half. And Princeton overall, again, they started slow, but I think they've done a great job with their defense and their offense has really picked things up. Tiger basketball to begin the second half. They have a four point lead, 29-25. I also think they got the crowd involved in the game late in that first half. I think they'll be more into it as we start this second half. That'll help. Individually for the Tigers, Mike Bechtold led the way with nine points. Nate Walton at seven. C.J. Chapman, who has the ball now, at six points for Princeton. Walton has it deflected by Weston. The Musketeers come the other way. Now this, this is where you want to watch underneath the low post. That's where all the activity is taking place. That's where they're right here. That's where Xavier wants the ball. And getting up high, Kyle Wente, but David West, who led the Musketeers in scoring in the first half with 11 points, will go to the line. And you know Skip Prosser talked about that at halftime with his Musketeers. We want the ball in the low post. We have a decisive advantage there. Let's get it in, and they get it on their first offensive series. So West, the 6'8 sophomore, at the line, and his first is no good. And they did a good job with free throws. First half, seven out of 10, 70%. Second on the way, good. He hits one of two, and it's a three-point ball game. 29-26, full court, Xavier Press. Had a triple team, Elno Kali, but he gets it to Wente. Since Al Nicali came in the game, they have not turned over the ball in that full court pressure. He's been a big help since he's come into the game. He runs the show for the Tigers. There's no question they are a better offensive team when he's in there. Long jump shot put up by Andre Logan. From Xavier. Chalmers. There's that battle underneath. They're trying to get into West, number 30, or into Fry. Jump shot put up outside, no, and Xavier's cold shooting from the perimeter continues. I think Xavier's doing the Tigers a, pay, a favor by shooting those three-pointers. I mean, the inside game is there. This is exactly where the Tigers wanted to be. Three-point lead, they can take their time, run their offense the way they want to run it. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Walton for three, got it! Three-pointer for Nate Walton, and Princeton has its largest lead. But again, they run the offense, they make Xavier play defense, a majority throughout that set there. They get a nice open shot and drain it. Chalmers for three, doesn't go, and Walton the rebound. It definitely sends a momentum swing here. I think if Princeton scores, you might see a timeout for Xavier. About two and a half gone by, second half. Elno Colley, they are just weaving in and out. Walton gives to Chapman from behind the screen, now back to Walton. He leaves for Elno Colley, a long three is good! Wow, that's NBA range plus. Princeton with a nine point lead, knocked away by Logan. Crowd now getting into it. A whistle. And a foul on Princeton. You mentioned really the first, maybe the second time this game, the crowd really get into it. You see the score on your screen. When you drain the three-pointers like they did early on in the game, that really gets the crowd going. Princeton with a nine-point advantage. Three minutes into the second half. McAfee dribbles in, now goes back outside, Fry for three, is good. Now, if Xavier ever needed a bucket, it was right there. Frey, Fry saw that they were having the double team, kicked it back out beyond the three-point line, hit a big shot for the Musketeers. 
It's a six point Princeton lead, 35 to 29. Elno Colley running the baseline. Xavier full court press. Chapman gets it across. Logan to Walton. And again, with the lead, Tigers in no particular hurry. If they get an open shot, they'll take it, but you don't have to force anything. Whistle and a foul on the Musketeers. Price overplayed a little bit defensively there, and he's the one that's going to pick that up. That's the first foul for Xavier. That's the third though on Price. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Logan cross court to Chapman. You can see how patient Princeton is here. Elno Cali goes to Chapman. They were trying to go back door, but good defense by McAfee. He anticipated. And he has it poked away from behind. Picked up though and blocked by Logan. Price tried to go underhand. Price comes back and Logan blocks it again. Two for a dollar there. Block him on one side, he comes back the other side. Both clean blocks. Here's a shot of the three-point play. Good drive there. Come in, boom. Now he gets it back, tries to reverse, and they're ready for him again. Wide open lane. Great one-on-one -on -one play and a beautiful block. Two blocks in one set. Nice. And as we mentioned, the crowd into it after that. 15-55 remaining second half. Princeton 35 and Xavier 29. Princeton so far, second half, everything going the way they wanted to. You have Xavier coming out, missing a lot of shots. Princeton's doing a good job getting in position, getting the rebounds. John Thompson talking to his young team. This is a young team. You take a look at their starting lineup. There's two seniors in the starting lineup, but you got guys uh, getting a lot of playing time, such as Kyle Wente, he's just a sophomore. Andre Logan's a freshman. Ed Persia's a freshman. We saw Waisaki, he's a freshman. Boy, it really bodes well for the future. They're playing well tonight. This Xavier team, remember, they come into this game five and one. They are playing strong, and Prince is doing a good job shutting them down defensively. Princeton comes in with a record of two up and three down. And as we mentioned, Xavier, five and one, their only loss was to Wisconsin. And it's been a while. If I, I'm not even sure if Princeton ever beaten Xavier in recent history. No, I know the case. You know, Xavier's got 29 points. Where a little over four minutes into the second half. This is a team that scores about 75 points a game. Has to be frustrating for them. Nothing new for Princeton, though. They've led the nation in scoring defense the last 12 years. Usually give up around 53, 54 points a game. And they're frustrating, Xavier. When Xavier has the ball, they've forced up some shots with this defense. Defense doing a nice job as expected. Xavier gets it in. West triple teamed. Price head fake, dishes underneath, and it's knocked away and taken away by the Tigers. It just wasn't a smart move by Price. He went right into a triple team there. Walton, top of the key. Tigers by six. Twenty comes around to meet the pass. Chapman, McAfee comes out on him now behind the perimeter. Logan goes to Chapman. Walton is open off the rim. Not a bad shot though, he was open. Fry's shot is partially deflected, then Price gets it back, he can't hit. Boy, Xavier having all kinds of problems offensively. Every break right now going Princeton's way, and the defense is causing a lot of that. Five minutes gone by, second half. Princeton with a six-point lead. Inside Walton. Flips it back out to Logan. Drives in, puts it up, and floats it off the rim. He 
Made a nice move, but couldn't get it to go. Perfect play in all aspects, just didn't make the shot. That was an excellent drive. And Walton comes back with the block. How bad it for this Princeton defense and their rejections. We'll look at it here again. Nice drive, swatted away again. Stolen by Princeton, Wentys ahead of the field, he lays it in. As we are coming out of the replay, just an ugly inbound pass went to no one but Wenty in an easy two points. Princeton by eight, 37-29. 14 minutes, five seconds left, second half. Inside to West, he gets position and scores. That time, West got position on the baseline, not much Walton could do. That's the biggest surprise in this game, that they have not given it to West more in the low post. You can see that when he gets it in the low post, he scores nine times out of 10. Here it is again, this is the whole key to this game here. They get it into West. West, a nice move here, and strong to the hoop. I don't think Princeton has anybody who can stop him, but they're stopping the entry level pass, and that's been the key. Princeton Tiger basketball is brought to you by McCaffrey Supermarkets. With locations in Princeton, West Windsor, and Yardley, Pennsylvania, McCaffrey's a supermarket experience. This game has been an experience today, I think, for the fans. Started quiet. Scoreboard now, I think, is making everyone a fan, but you can kind of sense Xavier may be on a little bit of a run here. Tigers come out. Led by Andre Logan, just a freshman. He's impressive. C.J. Chapman, Elno Cali, Kyle Wenton, also Nate Walton out there. Haven't seen Mike Bechtold in quite some time. Walton throws it away. He tried to go back to Elno Cali. Actually, he was tipped out by Xavier. Princeton got a break there. Thirty-seven, thirty-one. the score. You see Xavier defensively now really starting to extend their defense, looking to double team. Stolen, taken away by Sato, and he's fouled. Wow. One of the Xavier players is down. It's an interesting call. We'll get a good look at home here. I thought this was a clean block initially. Boy, I don't know. No hand action there. One of the Xavier players in the backcourt, that's be. Lloyd Price, limping off the court. He has a little bit more of a hop. He's in quite a bit of pain, though, in the beginning of that sequence. And he was well behind the play. He was almost down at the other foul line. Romain Sato is at the line. He is a 6'4 freshman. And he hits the first. Xavier can close to within four if he hits this free throw. He does. 37-33. Full court press. Tigers can't find anybody. Now they do. Wenty. They all know Colley and Logan in the right place for Princeton. Again, that full court pressure starting to kick in for Xavier. They're starting to get some good opportunities off of it. Seven on the shot clock. Elno Kali is hurt. Elno Kali hurt. Uh -oh. It's that, and it's the groin, it looks like. Oh, he's in a lot of pain. And now he's coming out. It looks to be that area. You know, I don't want to guess really what it is, but it looks to be in that area. Oh, this is awful.
We'll see now, when he came into the game, that's when they were able to beat the full court pressure. When he was not in, the Tigers really struggled. Look for the press on a make here. So, Persia back in the game. And it's knocked away. Good defense by the freshman. They go in, that's an offensive foul on Nate Walton. Well, they've been battling away down there in the blocks. Walton just got called for pushing off with the arm. There it is again. There you see Walton with the left arm. And then he got called for it. Mike Bechtold comes into the game for the Tigers. Princeton looking for a little offense now. Elmo Cali is on the Princeton bench and uh, he doesn't appear to have anybody paying much oh, medical my. attention to him. There's a foul is underneath against Princeton. Just I mean, kind of sitting there. He's in a lot of pain. I mean, we can see him across the court from here. But as you mentioned, now somebody's trying to help him out. That is strange. He may be going back to the trainer's room. He is walking. Meanwhile, Xavier's down by four. 12 minutes left in the game. Shot outside is good. That's a three-pointer for Kevin Fry. And just like that, the Musketeers have cut it to one. Here's that full court pressure now. Let's see if the Tigers can break it. Remember, they don't have their junior point guard in there, and Xavier gets called for the foul in the backcourt. That's the one thing they didn't want to do. Well, the rest have been consistent with what I like to call the Mickey Mouse fouls. Just little fouls with the guards out front. They've been calling them all night. And a timeout on the floor with 11.52 remaining second half. It's Princeton 37 and Xavier 36. You know, we don't want to keep uh, harping on the same subject, but it is an important thing to talk about. The fact that Ahmed El Nokali is not out there having left the game, and now they don't have that experience to break that pressure of Xavier's. It, there was less a sense of panic when he was in the game. When he was not in the game, a lot, not necessarily panic, but they could really feel the pressure that there was no one to bring the ball up the court. And I think you're gonna see the rest of the game. Xavier's gonna keep that full court pressure on. It's gonna be tough. Tigers clinging to a one point lead. But a lot of time left in this game, 11 minutes and 52 seconds. Also, from Xavier's point of view offensively, you expect them to uh, keep going inside now to David West? They have a de decisive advantage underneath. Now, if you're Princeton, you have to stop the entry-level pass. They've done a good job of neutralizing that. But when West gets the ball underneath, he's been tough to stop. I think if you get to a go-to play in this game, that's going to be it. Look at some of the young fans here at the game. There's one of those basketballs that they throw out whenever the Tigers make a three-pointer. You gotta be paying attention in all phases of the game here <laughs> in the gym. Could be looking the wrong way and get winged by a cheerleader. <laughs> one good thing is that they hit second most threes in the nation, so they gotta have a nice supply of those little basketballs to go kidding. around. They'll go through a lot of them this season. Yep. To me, this is a key point in this game right now. We talked about the injury, but the full court pressure, and you can send Xavier's on a swing. They need a big play up the floor. Princeton needs a score here. Walton to trigger. Looking, looking, finds Persia. He gets it across the midcourt line. He's dribbled right through that pressure. And throws it away, trying to get it to Walton on the bounce pass. You can definitely see some disarray from the people handling the ball right now. Their leader's not in there, the one who kind of kept them together, and it's causing problems. John Thompson's gonna send Eugene Ba into the game. Walton, scrambling after it, takes it out of bounds, so Ba comes in. Andre Logan comes out. Elno Colley is back from the locker room. Takes a seat on the Princeton bench. 
Nate Walton has done a tremendous job defensively underneath. A lot of times taking on two of the forwards, drawing turnovers and getting blocks. Bounce pass goes inside, turn around, no, tapped around, Sato gets it out. Good job by Sato. McAfee dribbles in, one on two, and a foul will be on the Tigers. But again, second effort for Xavier again as they get the rebound offensively off the glass, kick it back out and draw the foul. There's Ahmed El Nokali. He's standing in front of the Princeton bench. <laughs> I think he probably lobbying to come in the game. Also stretching it out a bit too. Knocked away. Well, that looked like a kick from here. Xavier finally loses it out of bounds. Well, it all works out in the end as the Tigers will get the ball, but you can just sense Xavier now is moving in for the kill. Princeton has to find a way to counteract that. Princeton up by one. They led by as many as nine here in the second half. But they've gone flat here over the last couple of minutes. Persia almost throws it away, and now he does. And again, we're, we're, we've been talking about it since the, the leader left the game. And I'm sure they're going to try to get him in if possible, but Princeton really struggling just to get the ball up the midcourt. You know, it's a fine line with a, a player like Ahmed El Nokali. You want to get him in because you want to win the game. However, you have an entire season to go. So you don't want to take any kind of a chance that you might permanently lose him. Shot put up and the foul. Eugene Baugh called on the personal foul. And David West will go to the line. He will shoot with an opportunity to give the Musketeers the lead. West is so strong inside. When he gets the ball, pivots to the basket, keeps the ball above his head, the only way you're going to knock it out of his hands is to foul him. Free throw, good. And we are tied at 37. So Princeton's nine-point lead has evaporated. Kyle Wente in the game. John Thompson, I like this now. He's talking to the young freshman, Ed Persia, in front of the Tiger bench. He's talking to him. Let him know what he did incorrectly, what he did well out there. Here we go again. Court press. Chapman will handle. Back pull. Now you need to run a good offensive set here. Xavier's on the surge. You need a good quality shot here. Musketeers have regained the lead. It's 38-37. Bechtold for three. Got it. Three-pointer for Mike Bechtold. When he gets open and gets a clear look at the basket, he's been draining him tonight. He's done a good job from three-point range. 40-38 to to the Tigers regain the lead. Bechtel's four for six from three-point range. Thrown away, but good job by Lloyd Price to get it before it went out. Ten seconds now on the shot clock. McAfee dribbles in, penetrates off the glass and in. In case there were the Tigers went for the double team, overcommitted, the lane was open. Good drive for the layup. Whoops. Walton calls timeout. Smart play by Nate Walton, takes the timeout. The thing that happened there is both men were on the out of bounds line. They passed it back to Walton, but Walton was heading back up the court. He had to jump back over the line, touch it, had the presence of mind to call time. Now he did dribble the ball. I don't think you're allowed to dribble the ball on the out of bounds line to, to my knowledge. <laughs> That's what coaches out yeah. there arguing. How can you dribble the ball out of bounds? Right. Skip Prosser is asking that very question. Well, the refereeing has been, I guess you could say, questionable today. So, Tiger fans. Princeton in the lead. Actually, we're tied at 40 with nine and a half remaining. There's been so many lead changes, I lost track. Both teams going back and forth, but Xavier in this last five minutes has done a great job defensively to get themselves back in the game. Hey, 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 hey. 
Walton, bounce pass into Wente, he gets it across. Bechtold at the top of the key. Now Wente. Whoops, Eugene Ba goes to Bechtold, they're out on him. Chapman, Walton, nice head fake, dishes back outside Chapman, Bechtold thought about the three. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Under 10. Bechtold puts up a three off the rim and draws the foul. So not a great shot there by Bechtold. He didn't get the shot he wanted, but he drew the foul. I guess if you're the, you're the Tigers, your go-to guy is going to be Bechtold. He's been hot. They get it to him here. Good fake inside. Two-point shot here, and he is fouled, so he'll get two. So Mike Bechtold, the junior out of Lebanon, Pennsylvania, at the line, averaging 15 points a game, hits the first. Well, with all those losses, Spencer Bloger, Chris Young, the Tigers needed someone to step up this year offensively and pick up the slack. So far, Bechtold's done that. And he's averaging 15 points a game. Hits both, and the Tigers have a two-point lead. It's 42-40, Princeton. Again, they're looking inside for West. If it's not there, they'll go for the jump shot. Price to Fry puts it up, floats it in. Nice shot by Kevin Fry. That's a very tough shot, too, because he had two defenders on him and had to avoid the backboard on a tough angle. Chapman in trouble, uh -oh. double teamed. And he calls a timeout. Skip Prosser saying, come on, we had him tied up before that timeout. Okay, give, it, give credit to the Tigers there. They get the timeout before the turnover, but it, it's amazing how much problems they're having in this full court pressure. Very difficult defense for Xavier in the full court defense. The Tigers are also hurting themselves with these timeouts. They're burning their timeouts. And with 8.29 left in a tie ball game, you gotta figure Princeton's gonna need some timeouts later in the game. Yeah, that's the second one they've had on an out of bounds type situation or a tie up. But with, in a close game, I guess as a coach, you have to accept it because a key turnover here, you know, the way Xavier's been surging, you have to kind of keep it down to a minimum as best you can. Princeton only has two timeouts left to take with eight minutes and 29 seconds left. There you go, that's the way to dress for the game. <laughs> and there's a young man who is... He's confident, this a, one's in the he's bag. He's a little tired. This one's in the bag, he's relaxing, getting ready for the victory party, I guess. <laughs> Wente comes in to get the pass. He's triple team, there's four players in the backcourt for Xavier. A long pass would have surely resulted in an easy layup for the Tigers. Isaki in the game now for the Tigers. You see how Xavier's overplaying way out towards half court. They'll take their chances in the low post. Bechtold is fouled. That might be three shots. I'll we'll have to see. Wait, if you're Xavier, if there's one guy you don't want to foul, it's Bechtel. He's going to get three free throws. He was fouled outside of the line. Price hobbles off the floor with four fouls. So Bechtel shooting three, and he hits the first, gets the roll. I'm going to black cat him here. He hasn't missed a free throw all year. <laughs> Second on the way. Oh, so, feel better. So far, so good. He is perfect from the line this season. That is amazing. We are into the sixth game of the season. And he missed. Waisaki, though, got the rebound. 44-42, his first miss of the year, that call. Sooner or later, I had to open my mouth, right? 
again, Tigers, good job offensively, taking their time here, looking for that backdoor pass. C.J. Chapman, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Quente dribbles in and lays oh. it up and draws the foul. Nice drive by Kyle Wente, the sophomore. That's an excellent play by Wente. It almost looks like Xavier didn't think he was going to drive. They almost let him go untouched right down the lane. Here he is, drives it in. West, late committing. He'll draw the foul. Almost the old-fashioned three-point play. So he is at the line to shoot two. 7.27 remaining in the game. Princeton has a two-point lead. And he misses the free throw. Ahmed Elno Colling is back in the game. Eugene Boss sits down. Well, in essence, he was out about six minutes of the game, and fortunately for Prince, when he comes back in, they have a two-point lead. And he misses both. So Princeton up 44-42. Xavier in the forecourt. Almost a double dribble. Knocked away in the paint, comes back to Fry, who misses the three. Went in and out. Fry likes to sit out and, oh, here we go. Wysocki open, puts it up and in. Well, they caught him sleeping after the miss. Beautiful pass up the court. 46-42. Knocked away by Chapman. McAfee for three, got it. Skip Prosser immediately calls a timeout with 6.33 remaining here in the second half. It's 46-45 Princeton. Here's a look at this pass again. A beautiful job by Wysocki. Good effort to hold that. Put the brakes on and come up with a quality shot. Well done. Conrad Wysocki is a freshman out of Germany. Six foot eight. Tigers with some Good looking young players. Look like they're going to contribute. Again, it's just a matter of getting used to the system, getting your playing time, getting your minutes, and just growing as a player. And, it, and then the confidence will come. It's been a good ball game. Princeton up by one. A lot of people came into this building tonight and didn't think the Tigers had much of a shot against the Musketeers. Xavier. At five and one coming in. And the Tigers struggling, quite frankly, in their first five games of the season. But this might be a game where the Tigers begin to turn the corner. They've done the little things right here, defensively and offensively in this game. Elno Cali to Chapman. CJ Chapman gets it up ahead. And Ahmed El Milkali at the point will run it for the Tigers. Keep an eye on Bechtold here, number 23. Isaki, top of the key, flips it outside, went through 10 seconds on the shot clock. El Milkali, someone's got to step up offensively now for the Tigers. Bechtold, back to Wente, takes the shot off the rim. And Xavier can take the lead down by one. Chalmers dribbles in. They go outside in the corner. Shot put up. No. Rebound Wente. Excellent swing pass there for Xavier. They got the shot they wanted, but Wente did a great job on the rebound. Dave Young took that shot from the corner for the Musketeers. Elno Kali gives it to Chapman. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Bechtel flips outside. Chapman, five seconds shot clock. Two seconds, and it's knocked away. And a foul on Xavier. 
with one second on the shot clock. Skip Brosser can't believe it. Yeah, that'll give the coach gray hairs real quickly because he's more or less just going to throw up a prayer here. When you give him the foul, you're doing a favor because he was off balance. Here comes your foul right here. You see in the background, just went to one, not a smart foul. So C.J. Chapman at the line, the senior out of Aurora, Colorado. Averaging 11 points per ball game. And his free throw is good. The Tigers have a two-point lead, 47-45. Nate Walton in, Eugene Ba in, Bechtold and Wysocki sit down. Both free throws hit. And there's a timeout on the floor with 5-11 remaining. Second half, it's Princeton 48 and Xavier 45. Got a TV timeout there, and that helps both teams there. As we mentioned, that Xavier two timeouts left, Princeton two timeouts left. But the way Princeton's doing right now, things are kind of falling into place from it, doing a nice job. And the exciting action of Princeton University basketball is brought to you by McCaffrey Supermarkets. With locations in Princeton, West Windsor, and Yardley, Pennsylvania. McCaffrey's a supermarket experience. All season long, Tigers basketball on RCN. And if tonight's game is any indication, looks like <laughs> it should be quite an exciting campaign. It, it, you know, I, I think it's going to be one of those years you don't know what kind of game you're going to get because you don't know what type of team's going to show up. Tonight, they're doing a great job. They're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the tough Xavier team. And as we mentioned on paper, this is a Xavier game, but Princeton just doing a lot of little things right when push comes to shove and coming up with some big plays. Close games are the norm for these two teams. Last year, 58-54 in the NIT. The Tigers, though, had a much more experienced ball club last year. This year, a lot of young players, and so far, these youngsters are playing excellent basketball. And to give an idea how well they're doing on defensively, coming in this game, Xavier's averaging 72 points a game. They only have 45 right now. There's the uh, always entertaining Princeton band. They're trying to get the crowd into it. <laughs> Xavier throws it in, trailing by three. Xavier. Really struggling from the field. They have not shot well. They're in the 30 percentiles from the field. Price spinning, twisting, scoring. Boy, Price is tough. When he drives to the basket, just, he just takes control of the game. Musketeers are down by one. 48-47. Wente gets it across. Elno Collie to Nate Walton. They are really setting up the work of play here. Ba dribbling in, flings it out. Under 10 on the shot clock. Walton. Logan, jump shot, in and out. Ba the rebound, tough rebound by Eugene Ba. And Princeton gets a fresh 35. Excellent job by Ba. Great shot by Logan. He just didn't drain it, but did a good job on the pump fake to get the open look. Dribbling in, Walton. Ba outside. Went to the three. It's short. Ba the rebound. Puts it up. No. Rebound. Logan scores. How about that for the Tigers on the glass? Ba, a great set there, even though he doesn't come away at the basket. He's hustling all over the floor. Tigers by three, 50 to 47. Price twisting again, shot short, but he draws the foul. You can see there not liking that at all was Walt. 
Kind of an off balance for a shot. Give you another look at it here again. Walton underneath is driving. There's the spin. Boy, I, <laughs> another questionable one there. Lloyd Price is at the line. And he hits the first. He'll get another. And they just put up on the board Walton with four fouls. He's got to be careful. And he misses Walton the rebound. Tigers by two, 50 to 48. Three minutes and 10 seconds left in the game. Princeton trying to pull the big upset. And the key here is run as much time off the clock, but not too much that you have to force a shot. You still want a good shot. You hear the students getting into the game now. Only five on the shot clock. Bod dribbles in, dishes underneath to Wente, and it's an offensive foul on Eugene Ba. They get Ba on the drive. Well, Ba got the ball with about four seconds on the clock, and he knew he had to do something. He drives hard to the basket, unfortunately drew the charge. Now Xavier will shoot. McAfee at the line. Here's your charge. Give you another look at it coming right into your living room. Defender hops over. Boy, just in enough time. That, that's again, that's a tough call as well. Eugene Ba comes out. Bechtold back in. I think it's a good move by John Thompson to Bechtold back in. You saw in that last offensive set. The Tigers need someone to go to offensively. They didn't have anybody really there to pull the trigger. And he's, he's been fairly hot throughout the game. Timeout with two minutes and 44 seconds left. We are tied at 50. Well, again, if you're Princeton, you, first of all, you've got to inbound the ball and get it up half court. The last few series up the floor, they've been able to do that. Then they're going to, of course, run some clock. Just need to get a good quality shot. One of the assistant coaches for Xavier there. I'm sure Skip Prosser is in that mess somewhere. <laughs> Actually, he's not. There he's he out is. on the court talking to his other assistant coaches. Well, what a lot of coaches will do, they'll meet with the assistants as they do in this huddle here to formulate a game plan. Then he'll go in the huddle and address the team. This is what we're going to do, guys. So we're all tied at 50. It's been a whale of a game. Two minutes and 44 seconds left. Each team with two timeouts left. What do you expect Princeton to do here? Again, the biggest thing they have to do is get the ball up the mid-court line. They've struggled with that throughout this game. So coach has to set some kind of formation to get them to that point. Then again, stay with the normal game plan, the pass the screen away and get a good shot. Try not to run all the way down to one on that shot clock, though, if you can avoid it. Oh. Now, the game is much more exciting than that, <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, these guys are into it. Those guys, they don't care what the, they, they don't care what the score is. <laughs> I don't even think they know there's a game going on right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, I wonder how many trips those guys have made to the concession stand oh, for candy. Just a handful. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like they're going to spread the floor here quite a bit. Elno Kali looking, looking, looking. Can't find anybody. Now does. How went he? Brings it across. Princeton needs a bucket. We are tied at 50 with two and a half left. But again, they want a good set here. They want to run their offense. Mech Xavier make a mistake. There it is. Back door, and that it's blocked it. on the top of the rim, and that's got to be goaltending, and it is. They score the basket. Well, that one they got. It was a late whistle, but this is what Princeton wants. They want Xavier to overcommit, make a mistake like they do here. Back door, layup. You can see off the glass first, so you count the bucket. On the goaltending call, it is 52 50, Princeton. Two 
2.20 left. Chalmers throws it away. Chalmers drove, trying to get the ball into West, but West cut in thinking he was going to shoot, wasn't ready for the pass. So the Tigers now up by two. This is a big trip down court for Princeton. Bucket here would give them a four-point advantage with two minutes left. Walton. Timeout, Princeton. Coach Thompson just said, what'd you do that for? Walton called a timeout. And Second timeout. Coach Thompson wants to know why. I th he may have felt like he was going to fall out of bounds, even though he didn't. I, I, you got me, like we talked about before, that's their last, they have one full timeout remaining. That's just a 30, but boy, it, <laughs> the closer this game gets and the less time left, tougher it's gonna be for the Tigers with just one timeout. <laughs> you gotta love it, the Tigers student section behind us, the uh, cheerleaders ran on the court, and because it's a 30 second timeout, the officials waved them off and they were roundly booed by the <laughs> Tigers student section. That's that home court advantage. <laughs> a minute 54 left, and, and as you mentioned, it's, that's huge. Princeton only has one timeout left. Again here, Princeton isn't necessarily setting out to do anything specific here. They want to keep the ball movement. They're waiting for Xavier to make a mistake, go back door and try and get a layup. Ahmed El No Cali gets it across the midcourt line. Xavier way out defensively. Fry out on Walton. Logan. Wenty dribbles in and a foul on Xavier. And that is the seventh team foul on the Musketeers. So that'll send the Tigers to the line. Wenty very aggressive there going to hoop. Draw the foul. Threw the foul before the shot. And also Lloyd Price fouls out of the game. That's his fifth personal foul. So the Musketeers are going to lose one of their most effective players in the game. He's been a factor inside, absolutely. He's done a great job underneath. Quite a few rebounds as well. Only leaves the game though with five points. It's another look at the foul and the penetration by Wenke. The foul was called before the shot. Now Wenke hit the line. He will shoot one and one. His first is good. Second on the way, no good. Princeton with a three-point lead, 53-50, a minute and a half left in the game. Fry's the guy you have to watch here. He leads the team in three-pointers. McAfee goes in the corner to Young. Tiger fans calling for defense, a minute 10 left in the game. Knocked Ooh. away by Ba, knocked out of bounds, and so Xavier will inbound. But they only have five seconds on the shot clock. Makes for a tough play when you're inbounding up near midcourt. Again, watch Fry here. Chalmers comes back to take it. Three on the shot clock. Three-pointer at the buzzer, no. And the rebound to Logan. Wow. And now no Kyle. Wow. Fouled in the backcourt, he goes down hard and the fans don't like it. Fry with the foul, that was borderline flagrant. Here it is again, you'll see Fry come in here. See if he's just whack, well the left arm got in there a little bit. Close, but not quite a flagrant foul. So Ahmed Elno Kali will go to the line, but first Xavier calls a timeout. They'll burn one of their two timeouts. With 56 seconds left, this is a 30-second timeout taken by the Musketeers. Well, the way Xavier's playing things right now, they took the quick foul there. They may, they may be trying to get into a foul game here and make Princeton beat them at the foul line. I personally think that's a mistake. Princeton usually pretty solid at the foul line. I think Xavier with the guard play has a chance to go for the steal first. 
Princeton up by three with less than a minute left. This would be a huge win for the Tigers, especially from a confidence standpoint. A young team, young team really just learning how to play the Princeton type game. And to win this one against a five and one Xavier club, uh, as you've said, it might be the turning point for the Tigers. And, and I like what Coach Thompson's done. They made the adjustments on offense. They were kind of forcing a lot of three pointers after a timeout. Said, let's run Princeton offense. And since that point, everything has changed for them offensively. Should point out, though, there's a long way to go. 56 seconds is an eternity in college basketball. Elno Kali is at the line. He will shoot one and one. His first is good. Well, now you're in that two possession game right now with the four point lead. Second in, is on the way, it's good. Princeton with a five point lead. 55, 50, 55 seconds left in the game. Xavier with a lot of confusion on offense here. Fry for three, off the rim, rebound Logan. Gives it to El No Kali. They're gonna foul quickly. And they foul him with 27 seconds left. Ahmed El No Kali will go to the line and the fans are on their feet. Well, with the five point lead, Xavier's gonna have to foul. It's just a matter now, can Princeton make their free throws? It'll be one in one for the junior from Pittsburgh. Got the roll. He wasn't sure, but it went down. Well, this is a big free throw here. This goes to a three possession game if he can sink it here. Good. 57-50 Princeton. Three-pointers are coming here. You got to guard the three-point line. Tigers are on the verge of a huge win. 20 seconds left. McAfee for three. No. Rebound, Wente. Eugene Ba is fouled. With 13 seconds left, it appears that Princeton is about to pull off the big upset. Seven point lead, 13 seconds to go. It's just about miracle status. And I'll tell you what, Princeton has played a heck of a game today. The crowd says it's over. Looks like Coach Prosser thinks the same thing. <laughs> the fans are yelling, overrated. Hey, first Xavier. home game, gotta get the cheers out. <laughs> ba, free throw, good. Of course, this is where the Tigers would just bury you at the line. Typical Princeton team shoots very well from the foul line. Five second is short, but Princeton has an eight point lead with 11 seconds left. McAfee dribbles in, puts it up, no. Oh. West misses the jam, but a foul was called prior with four seconds left. John Thompson saying, why are we fouling? And Logan, I believe, is going to pick up the foul there. And still four seconds to go, and regardless, I, unless you have a seven-point play on you, I don't know how you're going to come out of this if you're Xavier. Princeton, heck of a game tonight. Well, this will be John Thompson's biggest win of his brief coaching career, no question. West free throw, good. Second good. Princeton to inbound. Logan dribbles around. That'll do it. Ball game over. Final score, Princeton 58. Xavier 52. A huge win for the Tigers as they improve to three and three on the year.
I think that one of the major differences in the game was when they switched offenses more or less, stopped shooting the three-pointers, went more inside, got a lot of back doors. Defensively, though, you could see where they were really frustrating Xavier. Xavier just couldn't get in sync, and one of the key moments was that last nine minutes in the first half where they didn't make a bucket from the floor. An exciting win for the Tigers. Uh, did a lot of things right. Their home opener quite successful, and as I said, you know, this might be the game, might be the, the game where the Tigers turn the corner, and now they get ready for Rutgers on Thursday night. And, and when you're a young team, you need a game like this. Really builds confidence, and it's something to build for this team for the future. Just a tremendous performance tonight against a very tough Xavier team. That'll do it from Jadwin Jim for Tad Kozineski. I'm Lou Brogno, and for everyone here at RCN Sports, thanks for joining us. Final score once again, Princeton 58. Xavier 52.